Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it. We thank you for the revelation you're bringing forth. We will be doers of it and see the fruit of it in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you on conditions that were important for seeing the blessings of God coming forth, also conditions to see the promises of God coming forth, and also we talked about what is necessary for you to enter into the spiritual rest of God and to see God accomplish the things that He purposes in your life. Well, we're going to enter into that rest as we possess the promises. And tonight we're going to talk about are you building the spiritual house of God in your life? Because that is absolutely necessary. Isaiah 66, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven's my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? We talked about the entering into the spiritual rest is as this house is built, where we're going to talk more specifically about the spiritual house of God that is to be built in us. Of course, it begins with being born again, having received Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. In fact, it's interesting when Jesus said in Mark chapter 14, over in verse 58, he said, he, We heard him say, I'll destroy this temple, the temple that's made with hands, and after, within three days I'll build another made without hands. He's not talking about a physical temple. He's talking about a spiritual temple. The elimination of the old spirit and then a brand new spirit coming forth. And the brand new spirit that he's talking about is the spirit that we get when we're born again, the spirit of Jesus Christ. The old spirit is taken out. We get a brand new spirit and we become a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Where? In spirit. Not in the soul, not in the body, but in spirit, where we get a brand new spirit on the inside of us. Well, Jesus is the one that we need to get our eyes on, of course, to see this work be done. And we see the fact that this spiritual house of God, a house, has a cornerstone to it. And who is the cornerstone of the spiritual house of God? It is Jesus. 1 Peter 2, 6. Wherefore also it's contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. He that believeth on him, so it's a person, shall not be confounded. That's Jesus. Unto you, therefore, which believe he's precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Everybody's to walk in line with the word. Jesus is the word. We're not to stumble at it and be disobedient whatsoever. And of course, we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people. We should show forth the praises of him who's called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Jesus is the cornerstone. And what are we then when we get born again? We come into the house of the spiritual house of God as living stones. 1 Peter 2, 5, you also, as living stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So the spiritual house of God, of course, starts with Jesus, the cornerstone. And you and I come into it as living stones the day that we are born again. Well, this house needs to be built in us. And we go over to 2 Samuel <clears throat> chapter 7, verse 13. Here he's speaking, and Solomon's the one who did this. He said, He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Of course, this is the house of the Jesus, the cornerstone of, and you and I come into that house. This house is to be built. And this was Solomon's house, the temple there, which was a type of the church pointing towards what gets built in us in the church age. We come over to 2 Chronicles chapter 8 and verse 16.
Now all the work of Solomon was prepared until the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord, and until it was finished. So the house of the Lord was perfected. Notice there's a work to be done. And this work was prepared to see the foundation of the house of the Lord be laid. And that's a work that you and I must carry out as well, as we're hearers and doers of the word, to see the foundation of the house of the Lord laid in our lives. And this is an ongoing work that is to happen until it gets finished. And notice, when the work gets finished, the house of the Lord was perfected. That's exactly what's going to happen in us. When we see the finishing of the house of the Lord being built in our life, we will come to the place of perfection in the Lord, which is where we are all headed. We look over in Ezra, chapter 3. Ezra chapter 3, when the seventh month has come, remember we've talked about in the past, when you see the seventh month, you're talking about end time work. That's the month when the end of the church age is. That's the month when it speaks of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so when the seventh month was come, this is talking about the fulfillment here in the end time work in the church. When the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. The church will come, the remnant, in one accord, in line with the word of God, that will come to the place of walking in the ways of the Lord and seeing the building of God come forth. We see then stood up Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Jeteel, and his brethren, and builded the altar of the God of Israel to the offering the burnt offerings as written in the law of Moses, the man of God. And here they set up the altar upon there as they were setting up this and, and speaking and ministering to the Lord. And they come down to verse 6. And he says, From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer the burnt offerings unto the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. They were beginning to do this work, but they still hadn't seen the foundation come to pass yet. They had to get going on working on this. They come in verse 8. And here was the second year of their coming to the house of God. This is later at Jerusalem, in the second month. Began Zerubbabel and all these ones it speaks of. And the remnant, and this speaks of those in the end time church, the remnant who will respond to God to see this work be done. Of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of of the house of the Lord. Notice they had to come out of captivity. You won't do a lot of work in building the house of the Lord until you come out of captivity. We've got to get free from all the bondages before we're going to see the building of God come to pass. And that's what this speaks of, these ones who came out of captivity. And these are the ones, the remnant will come out of captivity because they're going to they're going to deal with sin. They're going to cast out the evil spirits. They're going to get rid of all the works of the flesh. They're going to conquer every enemy. And they're going to come to the place of coming out of captivity. And they're going to set forward the work of the house of the Lord to be accomplished in them. We come to verse 10. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set their, the priests in their apparel. That means when this foundation gets laid, the priests, which you and I are today, get set in their apparel. That would be their clothing. Well, that speaks of you and I. We get the spiritual clothing put on us, which are all the garments of God. We put on the armor of light. We put on the armor of righteousness. Put on the armor of God. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We put on all these things of the Word of God to see God's spiritual clothes put upon us. And so these guys, as the foundation gets laid, and how's that going to happen? By being a hearer and a doer of the word. Then you'll be set with your spiritual clothes on, which is what they had to come to that place of. Verse 11, sang together by course and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he's good. For his mercy endureth forever towards Israel, and all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. <clears throat> it finally got laid. And that's because of being a consistent hear and doer of the Lord of the Word of God that gets established in you. Remember, the foundation gets laid over time by being a consistent hearer and doer of the Word. We come over to chapter 4, 
and we see that at the same time, the enemy will try to work against you. Verse 4, where it speaks of the people of the land that weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in the building. In fact, they got to the place down in verse 24 where the work ceased. The enemy will try to stop the work of God in your life from building the house of God. Then cease the work of the house of God. That was a mistake. That was not supposed to happen, but it happened because they did not continue in doing the things God wanted until they heard the word again. In Ezra 5, verse 1, that's when Agehi the prophet, Zechariah, the son of Ido, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even to them. And they, then they rose up and they began to build the house of God again. Now, what did the prophets do in the Old Testament? They spoke the word of God to them. This speaks of speaking the word. You've got to keep the word before you if you're going to keep on building. If you quit, quit looking at the word, hearing the word, doing the word, you're going to get, it's going to weaken you and you're not going to see the building. In fact, people that don't get in the word, they see the building gets ceased in their life instead of getting continually accomplished. We must hear the word and be in tune with him and be doing what he says to see this building be accomplished in our life. We come to verse 16. There it speaks of, Then came Shezbazar, and he laid the foundation of the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And since that time, even until now, hath it been in building, yet it's not finished. That also tells you when the foundation is laid, well, that's not the end. That's just, that's just a, something that has to be done by consistent hearing and doing in the Word. But there's a lot of building that's to be done from then on. And it said the time was going on in the building, yet it was not finished. There's a lot of building to occur in your life. That's why you need to be hearing and doing the Word consistently, growing in the things of the Lord, and never getting to the place where you plateau or you get all, not continue to seek Him and learn and grow and become strong and, and increase in all the things that God has for you. The foundation, of course, as you continue to hear and do the Word, is going to get strongly laid. And here we see it in Ezra 6, verse 3. He said, in the first year of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be builded, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid. You know, anything can be pulled up in your life if it's not really established. If it gets strongly laid, it's going to be such that nothing is going to be able to shake you. And that's what God wants to bring you to. It needs to get strongly laid in your life. We come down to verse 14. <clears throat> Elders of the Jews builded, they prospered through the prophesying of Hegehi the prophet and Zechariah, the son of Ido. They builded and finished it. Here it speaks of them finishing this work. According to the commandment of the God of Israel, according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, the king of Persia. Now, in speaking of the finishing of this work, this is what God wants to accomplish, and He will accomplish it before the end of the church age. And we see, it's very interesting what it says here, this house was finished on the third day of the month, Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. Adar is the last month in the Hebrew calendar. What this tells you is the fact that that's going to be right before Nisan 1, which will be the end of the church age time and the beginning of when Jesus is going to take back the earth. So this speaks of the fact that if this house, this work, gets finished in the very last month, that tells you that the work is going to be finished in the body of Christ right before the end of the church age at the last, before Jesus then will begin to take authority and begin to take back control of the earth and establish the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And we also see in verse 16, the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of the house of God with joy. When this is finished, there'll be a dedication of the house because it'll be the perfected church. The glory of God will be poured out on this end time church and it's going to be mighty. That is what God wants. Now we also <clears throat> see something brought out over in Ezra chapter 7 and verse 9. Here it says, From the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. Babylon is the place where there was captivity. 
And on the first day of the fifth month, it came to Jerusalem. That shows you that it was a period of time to come from Babylon to get to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place where it's the teaching of peace or the coming to the place of seeing shalom, which is total completeness manifest in your life. So you go from captivity to come to the place of seeing, getting the word of God established, the teaching in you, and come to completeness, wholeness in your life. It's going to take some time, though, doesn't it? It's a period of time. It's a journey that you're on to see this be accomplished in your life, to bring you out of all captivity, out of all bondage in your life, to bring you to total freedom and liberty and possessing the promises and see this tremendous work be accomplished in, the, in your life. We go over to Psalms, chapter 11. This is all going to be based on you doing the word of righteousness. Notice what it says in Psalms 11, verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That tells you something else. You need to make sure you're walking in line with the word consistently so nothing gets torn up, taken out, destroyed in your life. The foundation needs to be laid and you need to keep it there. It needs to be strongly laid as we saw and you can't <clears throat> let it get destroyed. What can the righteous do? How would it get destroyed? Through open doors of sin, through the enemy's attacks and temptations that you don't conquer or overcome in your life. That's why we've got to make sure that we are guarding ourselves. We're conquering every bit of every temptation that comes, walking in line with the Word. And if the foundations do get destroyed, what could the righteous do? They can't do any much of anything. We've got to walk in line with the Word and see the foundations. Of course, this is also what's happening, uh, what the devil is trying to do in this nation today. We must get the foundations established and guard them so the enemy does not bring destruction against them. In Hebrews, we see over in chapter 6, it speaks about the principles of the doctrine of Christ which are to get established in us. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, if we get them established in us, which they are to be, let us go on unto perfection. That's where we're headed. That's when the work is finished. That's when we've come to perfection, the house of God coming to perfection, as we talked about. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Otherwise, the foundation should be laid. It should be established. We shouldn't have to lay it again because it got torn up, apparently, or we didn't hold on to it. It wasn't strong in our life. And notice the foundation. Repentance from dead works. That means changing your mind so you do not walk in anything that is a dead work. That would be anything that's contrary to the Word of God. Any works of the flesh, any works of sin, walking in the ways of the world, they need to all be totally eliminated from your life. All dead works. We need to have works that are producing life as we're walking in line with the Word. Of faith towards God. We need to walk by faith. Everything you do is going to be with your faith. The victory that overcomes the world is even your faith. With your faith, that's how you're going to receive all the promises of God and conquer everything that would come against you in your life. Of the doctrine of baptisms, understanding the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the new birth that brings us into relationship with Him. The other baptism is the baptism of water, which is showing the fact that we have left the world. We are not a part of this world. We've come into the priesthood and we are now belonging to the Lord and we're walking according to heaven's ways. We are through with the ways of this world. And also the laying on of hands. The laying on of hands is a doctrine of the church. It is important. <clears throat> the laying on of hands is how you transmit and release things into people. It's amazing that I hear Christians, even ministers say, don't lay hands on anybody. I've heard people here come and ask me about, well, I've heard others say we're not supposed to lay hands on people. That's a lying doctrine from the devil. We are to lay hands. It is a doctrine of the church. We lay hands on people to release the healing power of God into them, to transmit the anointing into them. You lay hands is a transmission of something into the person. Then we lay hands on them when they would ordain people into uh, positions of, of leadership in the church. A laying on of hands is a means of transmitting things. Don't ever let anybody tell you you shouldn't lay hands on someone. We should always lay hands on them. In fact, when we cast out demons, we command them to come out with our mouth 
and we lay hands on the people to release anointing and healing to flow into them simultaneously. Now there's one scripture that talks about how you lay hands on no man suddenly so you're not a partaker of, of the person's sins. That doesn't mean you don't lay hands on them. Of course you still lay hands on them. But you locate them first and be sure they're right before you lay hands on them. This doesn't mean you don't lay hands. Some people read this and say, oh, I'm not going to lay hands on anybody. That's crazy. You don't read, how could you read that into that? That's not so. No. What do you want to be sure? You want to be sure that that person's born again, you know, walking right with the Lord. And they're, you know, they're following the way of the Lord. And then you lay hands on them to release the things of God. So laying on of hands is a doctrine of the church. And uh, so don't let anybody try to deter you or steer you from laying hands on people. That's the way you release anointing and healing to flow in and the things that God wants to bring forth in their life. Another thing we see is the resurrection of the dead. Now, there will be a resurrection of the dead. Of course, those that are the righteous dead and the life, those that are the ones that are wicked dead are going to be under judgment and they're going to be into eternal uh, judgment and be in torment forever. And there is eternal judgment, of course. It speaks of eternal judgment is so. God is a just God. The righteous will be into life eternal. Those that are the wicked, they're going to be into everlasting fire, those ones. These are doctrines of the church that we must be established in. But what are we supposed to do as we get the doctrines of the church established in us? We're to go on to perfection. God wants you to go on into perfection as you see the finishing work of the spiritual house of God accomplished in you, being built, and going to the place of perfection. There's many important qualities that we want to look at that are necessary if you're going to see this work be, come to the place of being completed. First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 19. He said, Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise therefore and build you the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. Well, if this house is to be built to the name of the Lord, these are the things that you need to do to see it get accomplished. You set your heart and your soul, you're going to seek him. You're going to seek God with all of your being. And what are you going to do? You're going to build the sanctuary which is the sacred place, the holy place, meaning you're going to come to a place of holiness. Well, the way you come to the place of holiness is because of the fruits of righteousness produces holiness, which means being obedient to the word of righteousness is absolutely essential. Getting the word, being a doer of it, obedient to it, it produces the fruits of righteousness in your life. And what's going to happen when you come to the place of being holy? You'll bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. The manifest presence of God will come because you are a holy vessel in the presence of God. And you'll see this work be built. So what do we see here? You seek the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and you're going to build the th holy things of God in your life by hearing and doing the Word, bringing forth fruit unto holiness. And you're going to be sure that you're a holy vessel because you are not going to yield to any kind of sin. You're going to conquer and overcome everything. In other words, you're going to see this complete work be done as the house is being built to the name of the Lord. We look at chapter 29. We look at verse 19. <clears throat> Given to Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, thy statutes, to do these things and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. So here, Solomon's going to build this thing. What does he need? He needs a perfect heart. You and I need a perfect heart. If, we don't, if our heart's not right, we're not going to be able to build the things of God. God is looking on the heart. He wants you to deal with anything in your heart that is not right. There cannot be unforgiveness, resentments, bitterness, any kind of evil things in our heart. Our heart needs to be purified. We need to root everything out that's not of him. And we're going to keep his commandments and keep his testimonies and keep the statutes, the ordinance of God, and do all these things to see the building of God be accomplished in our life. So, again, a perfect heart, keeping, doing the commandments, 
of God to see these things be accomplished. Another thing that's going to be important to see this work get done, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Notice, the hand of my God was good upon me. Well, God's hand will be upon you if you're walking right with him and your eyes are upon him. <clears throat> Certainly, if you're walking in sin, he's not going to be manifesting himself in your life whatsoever. And furthermore, <clears throat> speaks of the king's words that he had spoken unto me. So we should be hearing the word of God. The word gets in your heart. The word gets in your mind. The things that he's spoken, those are the things that you're going to carry out and do in your life. As God's hands upon you and you have his words in you that he's spoken unto you, you will be able to rise and build, and it will strengthen your hands for the work because you've got to get strong, spiritually strong, because the enemy will try to work against you to weaken, that, weaken you and hinder you from being able to accomplish this great work in your life. We also see in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10, in seeing this work be accomplished, one of the things, of course, you're going to be building the walls as you're building this spiritual house in your life, he says in verse 10, Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. Uh, they didn't have strength. Why? And there's much rubbish. So that we're not able to build the wall. That means if you don't have the strength, how are you going to build something? You've got to have strength to do it. Well, why was their strength decayed? Because they had a lot of rubbish in it. That means you've got to get the rubbish out. The rubbish is hindering you from having spiritual strength. That's the, all the areas of the evil spirits that have to be cast out, all the areas of sin, all the bondages in your life. Anything that's not of God needs to be removed. You want a clean house and the purification in your soul by hearing and doing the word and get to the place where you have the strength of God. If your strength is decayed, well, that's because there's some things that are hindering it. There's the rubbish in you. You've got to get the spiritual rubbish out of you. That's why they were not able to build the wall. You've got to get that out if you're going to see the building of God be accomplished. <clears throat> Verse 17, as they're building the wall, he says, They which build on the wall, they that bear burdens, those that were laden, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and the other hand held a weapon. Well, that meant they were applying themselves to the work, but they also had the weapon ready to fight against the enemy at the same time. Otherwise, you're not just going to be doing the work and then not be ready to deal with the enemy because he will try to attack and hinder you. For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side and so build it. Now that's what it's going to take. You're going to have to always be ready to deal with every attack of the enemy. Any temptations that come against you, you're going to speak the word of God. You've got your sword ready to speak, to smite the enemies, to conquer anything that would come against you. <clears throat> so... That means we got to be involved in the warfare. At the same time, we're involved in the building of God in our life to see God accomplish what he wants to do. And we also got to get every area of sin has got to go. Nehemiah 6, verse 1. Now it came to pass when Sambal, Tobiah, and Geshub, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein. The breach is a break or a gap. And why is that? Because of sin. Open doors, things that are still areas where the enemy can work against you that haven't been eliminated. All the gaps, all the breaches, anything where there's been any kind of open door for the enemy has to be eliminated. So this speaks of us dealing with all the sin areas in our life, making sure all spiritual doors are closed, there's no place for the enemy, no breach, no opening, no gap for the enemy to get in any longer in our life. We also see another point brought out over in Job 22. Job 22, verse 23. He says, If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from my tabernacles. So, returning to the Almighty, that's repentance in our life. Getting rid of the iniquity, putting it far away from us. That, again, that's dealing with all the sin and all the evil spirits because... From the iniquities, that's how the evil spirits come in. So you're going to deal with all the root causes of all the problems, and you're going to cast out all these evil spirits, get rid of them. As you return to him, and you put all this stuff away from you, 
You're going to be built up. God will build you up as you're getting free of these bondages in your life. Of course, you're going to be walking in line with the Word of God. We see over in Psalms 28 something that's said that's important. Verse 5. What could hinder you from seeing it? Verse 5 says, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of His hands, He shall destroy them and not build them up. Who's doing the building? God's doing the building. If you don't regard the work of the Lord and the operation of His hands in your life, otherwise you don't let Him really have His way to accomplish the things that He wants, oh, you're, you're, gonna, you're not going to see the building. In fact, you're going to see the destruction. Why would that be? Because we're walking in the ways of sin, and what's going to happen? Curses are going to come upon you. Uh, you know, the curse, will, curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, the Bible says. Proverbs 3.33. So we must be sure that we're regarding the works of the Lord, the operation of His hands in our life, to let Him have His way so He can do what He wants. Otherwise, there's no untouchable areas in your life. Everything needs to be on the table. Deal with me in all areas so that you can clean me up in all areas so that then we, instead of being destroyed because of carrying sin areas in our life, instead we'll be built up and we'll see the things of God accomplished. Psalms 102. Verse 16. <clears throat> Psalms 102, verse 16. Look what it says. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. That means as the building of God is going on in your life, God's going to be manifest in his glory. He'll appear in his glory. That's the presence of God will be coming into you. You'll get filled up more with the presence of God as the building of God is coming forth in your life. So, we need to get built up. The more you get built up, the more you're seeing God work, the more He's going to be get worse, building the things of God to bring the manifestation of His presence. The glory of God will appear. The same time, we see over in Psalms 127, verse 1, <clears throat> a psalm that we've begun to sing. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. You can't be doing things in your own strength. You can't just be doing what you want to do or how you want to do it or when you want to do it. You need to let God have his way and let the Lord do the building as you're hearing and doing the word. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain. They build it. And we would just be spinning our wheels. Otherwise, you've got to let the Lord have his way and let him accomplish this work. Otherwise, we are just laboring and not doing the things that God wants. We could be laboring for the wrong thing, see. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom hath builded her house. How do we get wisdom? We get knowledge. We hear and do it, apply it in our life. It produces spiritual understanding as we're walking in it. And then as we continue in the knowledge and understanding, it produces wisdom imparted to us. So wisdom is going to be the result of you hearing and doing the word consistently in your life that produces that understanding. You have the wisdom of God of what to do. You need to come to the place of having wisdom in your life. In fact, it even talks down another place here in verse four, chapter 14, verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with their hands. We want to have wisdom, so all women, so they're building the right thing. You want to be a wise woman. That's someone who's hearing and doing the word and has grown up in the things of God. We don't want to be tearing it down. We see this also spoken again over in Proverbs 24, <clears throat> verse 3 and following. Through wisdom is a house builded. By understanding it is established or becomes firm and stable. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So you're going to get knowledge, you're going to get understanding, and you're going to get wisdom to build this, to get it established and to see God fill it with all the things that he wants, which is all the fruit of God, the, the promises of God, all the things he wants to bring forth in your life. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength, because we've got to get strong as we're building this spiritual house in our life. Now, at the same time, we can't be lazy and slothful. Many people don't see the house built because they're not engaging as they should consistently in building the things of God in their life. Look what it says. Ecclesiastes 
by much slothfulness, the building decayeth. That means your building may not, it's been built somewhat. It doesn't mean it's always going to stay that way if you don't continue in hearing and doing the word and walking in it and increasing. Oh, if you get lazy, you get slothful. By much slothful, it says, being sluggish, the building will begin to decay. That's because this is to be your lifestyle. You're hearing and doing the word consistently. You're going to war continually. You're going to be continually putting your faith in operation. You're going to be continually abounding, increasing in the things of God. And notice, through idleness of the hands. That's inactivity, that means. <clears throat> we look down below. Inactivity. It means you're, you're not doing anything. You're kind of just sitting there doing zero. No, we should be active in building the things of God consistently. Through idleness of the hands, the house will drop through. So this is going to be an ongoing work that is to be happening in your life consistently. If you have a lot of slothfulness and you're idle, your building will decay and eventually it will drop through. We cannot have that. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. I have raised them up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. He shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. So righteousness has to be established in you. Hearing and doing the word of righteousness, you get raised up in righteousness. God's going to direct all your ways. It's always going to be in line with his word. And what's going to happen? You're going to build the things of God. And, of course, he's going to, you're going to come out of captivity. All captivity is going to be broken in your life as you're walking in the ways of the Word. We even see it speaks about the intercessors, what their work is, part of what their work is. As they're praying, they want to see things be restored and built. Isaiah chapter 58, which is the fasting chapter, and speaks about the intercessor in the midst of this. If you go through here, it's all talking about intercession back in, back in here. <clears throat> when he talks about the fast that he's chosen and how you're going to engage in, in uh, intercession to loose the bands of wickedness and undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. And in the midst of that, down in verse 12, it says, They that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Places that were, you know, brought all destruction. Well, they got to get built. Got to build those places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, where the gaps were, and restorer of paths to dwell in. There needs to be a building. There needs to be a restoration. There needs to be a repair job, an area where there's problems. And there needs to be raising up of the foundations to be established in you. That is part of the work of the intercessor. And, of course, these things are all supposed to be established in our own life. You're also going to engage in the warfare to see this spiritual house be built. Jeremiah 1, verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms. And what are you going to do with your authority? To root out, pull down, destroy, throw down, as well as to build and to plant the things of God. So you're going to bring destruction against the works of the enemy, and you're going to build and plant the things of God. <clears throat> That's what he wants. So it's not just build and plant good things. It's also get rid of all the evil things. And again, it's not just <clears throat> get rid of all the evil things. It's also the building and planning part. It's a combination of both that are to be involved. At the same time, we cannot have any sin or unrighteousness operating in our life. Jeremiah 22, verse 13, makes quite a statement. Woe unto him that builds his house by unrighteousness. Well, that would be sin. He's got all kinds of areas. See, you're always building something by what you're doing. So if you're walking in the ways of sin, or walking the ways of the world, or in the flesh, you're building your house by unrighteousness, whether you realize it or not. And his chambers by wrong, that uses neighbor's services without wages, and giveth him not for his work. We cannot be doing anything that's contrary to the way of righteousness. We need to be building according to God's ways. And there also needs to be a cleansing occurring. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 Ezekiel 36, down in verse 33. Thus, say, <coughs> Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that, that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell on the cities, and the waste shall be builded. 
So, if you're going to get build up, again, you've got to get all this rubbish out. You've got to get all this uncleanness out. As you get cleansed from all the iniquities, then God says he'll cause you to dwell in the cities and the waste shall be builded. What was a place of destruction will now get built and it'll be the things of God being built in you. That is what he wants. And of course, this is a process and we even see it in the New Testament. We looked at the scripture earlier, but we didn't comment on the process. 1 Peter 2, 5. You also, as lively stones or living stones, are build up a spiritual house. When it says are build up, this doesn't mean it's already done. You know, people say, well, I thought I already was build up a spiritual house. It's not, not saying that. Because this is a present tense verb. The present tense means ongoing continuous action. It would be translated more literally because it's also a passive voice. You also, as lively stones, are continually being built up a spiritual house. It is a continual work. You are being built up a spiritual house. Now, how on the, how does that happen? It's going to be again through the word in your life. Matthew chapter 7 shows us this building of the house. Verse 24 and following. Verse 24, he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I'll wisen him, liken him to a wise man, who built his house upon a rock. When it talks about hearing, this isn't a guy just heard it once in a while. This is someone who's hearing the word consistently, present tense. Whoever's hearing and continually hearing these sayings of mine. And what else is he doing? He's not just ignoring them. He's applying them in his life. You plot, put them in operation in your lifestyle. Present tense for the word doeth. is doing it continually. He's like a wise man, built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, beat upon the house. Those are a type of attacks of the enemy coming against it. it fell not, <clears throat> for it was founded upon a rock. And this is where we also see how the foundation gets laid. Because the word founded is this word, meaning to lay the foundation. And if you're going to get it laid strongly, it's because you have worked this, not just when you have a problem, because that's, 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 you're not going to see it get established in, t in a moment in time when you have an attack. It's because you did it in the past. And we can see that this is actually speaking of this because of the tense of the verb. The tense of the verb is a pluperfect tense. It's not common. The pluperfect tense means action that's completed in the past with effects in the past. It's different from the perfect, which is completed in the past with present effects at the time of speaking. This is talking about something that was accomplished in the past and the effects were done in the past, meaning it was pretty much established. It was like strongly laid foundation. Why? Because of consistent hearing and doing. In other words, you need to be hearing and doing and hearing and doing and hearing and doing to get this foundation established in the past, set so it is already set, when, regardless whenever any attacks will come against you in the future. But then we come to verse 26. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, now he's been hearing them, and doing them not, he hasn't been doing them. There's some people that hardly hear the word at all. No, they're not going to get very far. How about the people, though, that hear the word consistently, but they're not doing the word? It's not going to produce good results in their life. You've got to incorporate it into your lifestyle. Be a doer of it. Present tense. Doeth. Present tense. The guy who's doing the word consistently, that's the guy that's going to see this established in him. But this guy's not doing it. What's going to happen to him? He's like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, same attacks, beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it's interesting what it says here. The word was is an imperfect tense in the Greek. The imperfect tense means an ongoing action in the past. It's different from the present tense, which is an ongoing action in the present. This talks about an ongoing action that was occurring continually in the past. So the way you would think of this is the great was the continual ongoing downward fall of it. That's what happens because of not doing the word of God. 
In other words, if you're going to build this spiritual house, you've got to be a consistent hearer and doer of the Word of God. Without it, you're never going to see it be built in your life. We come over to Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Now, brethren, I commend you to God, to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. God's word will build you up and strengthen you. And also, it'll give you an inheritance. It'll bring those inherited promises to pass as you do what they say, among all those which are sanctified. We see another scripture over in Matthew that as you get the word in you and you get build up, you see this building occurred in your life. I'm sorry, Matthew 16. Verse 18. Here when he says, I say unto thee also, uh, also unto thee, thou art Peter and upon this rock. He's not talking about Peter. Peter is the word Petros. Pet, rock is the word Petra. It's a different word, and it's talking about what? The rock of revelation knowledge that came to him, because that's the subject here. When Simon told him, you're the Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Revelation knowledge of the truth of the word was revealed to him by the Father that's in heaven. And that's what he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the rock of revelation being revealed to you by hearing and do the word, I will build my church. It's not on a person. It's on the word being revealed to you because you hear and do it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail or be strong or have superior strength to be able to prevail or overcome against it. Meaning, when you and I go against the works of the enemy, we can conquer them. They can't stand against us because we'll have the revelation which will bring the spiritual strength of God in us. We'll be built, we'll become strong, and we'll be able to conquer everything, anything that we would go after to destroy it in our life. We see another thing that's important. Luke chapter 14. In Luke chapter 14 it speaks of those who are the real disciples. <clears throat> in verse 26, he says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children, brother and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, this is not talking about you literally hating your father. You're supposed to love everybody, so we know that's not talking about it. It's talking about the fact of also hating his own life. I mean, you're supposed to love yourself. And when here it's talking about the suke. What this is talking about is you're putting a father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters, or only whatever I want to do before the Lord. No. You can't have anything else above the Lord or before Him. If so, you cannot be my disciple, one who's following Him. That's what it's talking about. It goes on. Whoever does not bear his cross, crucifying the flesh daily, and come after me, which would be seeking after him, doing his word. He cannot be my disciple. Which of you intending to build a tower sits not down first, counts the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? We're doing a building. We want to see it be finished in our life, the building of the house of God. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation. We get the foundation laid, but remember, it's not done yet. We've got to see this work continue on to be finished. He's not able to finish it. And it's interesting, the word able is the word iskoo. He doesn't have the mighty strength. How do you get the mighty strength to do things? It's through the word in you. You need the spiritual strength to conquer all the enemies and to see this building be accomplished. He begins to mock him. This man began to build, but he was not able. He didn't have the iskoo. He didn't have the mighty strength and force to be able to finish it. How do we get the mighty strength and force? Through the Word. The armor of God is the power of God resident within you and then manifest out of you as you're putting the Word in operation, speaking it, praying it, and this implies the application of the Word in your life is what shows forth the mighty force that's going to be released to finish this great mighty work that will be accomplished in your life as you hear and do the Word. <clears throat> We come over to verse 33. 
So likewise, whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Well, that's because we're going to put God first place. We're not going to have anything else before us. And we're going to do things according to the Word of God and get the Word in us and become powerful and mighty so we can accomplish and see this great work be done. We, we, we can see, even see this over in John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to the Jews that believed on him, If you continue in my word, that's consistency, hearing and doing it, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. That's going to come after you become a disciple. And the truth shall make you free. It'll set you at liberty and bring you to the place of being free and seeing the promises of God come to pass. Also regarding coming to the place of being a disciple, which is we've got to be a, a disciple, forsake all to be a disciple and see this building get accomplished. John chapter 15 talks about the true vine and my father's the husbandman and how every branch in me that bears not fruit he takes away, but every branch that bears fruit, he bring fruit, he purges it or cleanses it so it may bring forth more fruit. As we go through the cleansing process, getting rid of all the garbage, getting rid of all the sin, all the iniquity and so forth, will bring forth more fruit. And then when we come to verse 5, where it says, I'm the vine, you're the branches, he that abideth in me, he abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. We're to come to the place of bringing forth much fruit. That's after you've gone through the cleansing process, and now you're hearing and doing the word consistently. And notice what it says about that one. Verse 8, Here it is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Much fruit, hearing and doing the word, fruit, more fruit. You've gone through the cleansing process, now you have much fruit so shall you be my disciples. And it's disciples that get this spiritual house built because they become strong, they become mighty, they see the, the power of God manifest, they have nothing hindering them whatsoever. They're totally, they're, they're crucifying the flesh, they're coming after him, they're doing everything that he says. Those are the ones that will see it accomplished. Another thing we see about the building of God be accomplished this is what the churches were doing. It says in Acts chapter 9, verse 31, the churches had rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. I mean, they were built up. The building of God was being accomplished. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort or the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. So these ones had rest, and we already talked about we possess the rest, as, enter into the rest as we possess the promises. And we're getting built up. And they also were walking in the fear of the Lord and they were being encouraged, the comfort and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, and they were being multiplied. Again, this is seen that they're following the Lord. If you're walking in the fear of the Lord, you're delighting greatly His commandments, you're doing what He says, you depart from iniquity, you hate evil, all the things that speaks about that. And when you're speaking, walking in the comfort, the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, that means you're hearing the Word, you're doing the Word, you're acting on all the things that He's speaking to you and showing you what to do. And they were, of course, being edified and built up and that's what he wants for you in your life. We see another principle shown in Acts 16, verse 26. Here's where the foundations were shaken, it speaks of in the prison. Acts 16, 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison, well, that's where they were in bondage, they would speak of, were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. So if there have been foundations established in you of being imprisoned, they've got to be eliminated. Everything's got to be dynamited, so to speak. Everything's got to be opened up. Every band has to be loosed and broken. And all any foundation that's been established in you in the past, it's got to come out. It's going to get loosed. You, the, all, every foundation will be broken and you'll come to the place of being able to walk free from it. Otherwise, we don't put band-aids on problems. We get rid of them. We're going to have to drive them out and loosen and tie them and throw them out and eliminate them out of our life. Another thing we see, 1 Corinthians, a lot of people put band-aids on their problems and they never go away. They just try to cover them over, you know, kind of live with them, you know. <laughs> They're not going to leave. 
they have to be put, gotten rid of. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. We are laborers together with God, your God's husbandry, your God's building. That shows you that you have a part to play with this. Laborers together it means we're doing something. It's not just God, all God. We're laborers together with God. So we're, we're working out our own salvation, remember, and carrying all this out. Your God's husbandry, your God's building. God is building things in you as you are laboring together with him, seeing accomplish what he purposes. Verse 10, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Another buildeth thereon. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Well, that's an important statement because we're building something in everything we're doing. And if you're not doing the right things, you could be building the wrong things in your life. You want to take heed how you're building. Are you building the things of God? Are you building in the way he wants it built? You can't build things and leave the rubbish in there. Oh, we're supposed to get the rubbish out. You can't let you know, these, these areas that I'm just going to cover over and put up with them and think that they're going to be okay and I'll still build things. No, you've got to get rid of things. You've got to do it God's way. You take heed how you are building thereon. Everything that's not of him has to come out and we've got to build the, only the things of God in our life. No other foundation can no man lay than what's laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. The day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is, or what quality it is, what kind is it. Hmm. You're not going to be able to fool anybody. <laughs> God's going to see everything in your life of what it's been built, how it's been built, what, what's the motivation behind the build, building of it, you know. You can be trying to, you know, you've you got a wrong motivation for why you do things, some people do. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, well, that means it passes the test. He's going to receive a reward, and that's what we want. If any man's work shall be burned, <laughs> that wasn't a good work or had a wrong motivation for it, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Well, that means we need to make sure that we are not building the wrong things in our life. We even see this brought out again. We can't build things. Also, some people have destroyed things and then they build them again. You don't want to let that happen. Look what it says in Galatians 2.18. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. I destroyed it once, but now I'm back building it again. Now we can't have that. We want to destroy those things and make sure they stay underfoot. And we don't build those things again in our life. You become a transgressor. You're a lawbreaker. You went back into things. So many people have gone back into the same old bondages again that they might have destroyed or were on the road to destroy, but they didn't continue and see the work totally done. If so, we make ourselves a transgressor. That's a mistake. In Ephesians chapter 2, we come over to verse 19. Now, therefore, you're no more strangers and foreigners, but your fellow citizens with the saints. You and I are citizens of heaven and of the household of God. We belong to the household of God because we're born again. Built upon the foundation, the apostles, prophets, Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together. We're all building and coming in line with the word of God. We're to become one body and one accord in line with the word of God. Groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. You're going to grow up. And as you continue to grow, Present tense, we've got to grow up continually. We can't just stay in the same state we're in. We can't just get so far and then stop, you know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable where I am. No, that's not the way it's to be. You're to be continually growing up into, unto the holy temple in the Lord, in whom also you're builded together. This is a building going on, remember. For what? Not just to be a holy temple but for God to come and manifest himself, to be a habitation of God through the Spirit. He's coming to inhabit you. 
Remember, he comes to dwell in us and he also comes to walk in us. How could he walk in us? Because he's inhabiting us and he's now manifesting himself in our life. We also see over in Ephesians chapter 4 how this is being done. Ephesians 4.11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. And what's their purpose? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the building up the body of Christ. So, till what? Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the precise, correct knowledge of the Son of God to the perfect man. So this growing up and perfecting, coming and bringing us to the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It's to come in the corporate body of Christ, as you and I are growing up in the things of God, which is what he wants. We see another thing over in Ephesians, back in chapter 3, verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded. This is the word for laying the foundation in love. If we're going to see this building be accomplished, we do have to be established and have the foundation in love. Without love, we're nothing to remember, and that's the commandment. Every one of us are to walk in love towards God and walk in love towards every person as well. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. Here he says, if you continue in faith, grounded, foundation laid, it's the word, and settled, means firm, immovable, steadfast, set, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. So that means we're to get established in hope, we're to get established in faith, it's to be the foundation in our life. So love, hope, faith, those are the three things that abide, remember. They're all to be established in us and to be grounded in our life if we're going to see the building of God be accomplished. We come over to chapter 2 and verse 6. As you therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established, made firm in the faith, as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. We continually give thanksgiving unto him as we're taking hold of the promises. And notice you're rooted and you're built up in him. This is the building of God. As you are rooted, walking in line with the word, you get established in the faith, you got Thanksgiving continually coming forth out of your mouth. Another thing that's important for building the things of God in your life, 1 Timothy chapter 6, you're going to be a vessel to reach out to others as well. Verse 18, that they do good, that they're rich in good works as you're ministering to other people, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, to, to reach out to other people. Otherwise, we're not to be an island to ourselves. We're to reach out to other people to minister to them. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. You minister to people, they'll, God will have you minister back to you. So whatever you sow, you know, you're, you're going to reap down the line. That you may be able to lay hold on eternal life because you've been ministering those things to others as well. Another thing we see for the building of God in your life 2 Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation, this foundation laid as of God, stands sure, strong, immovable, fixed in your life. Having this seal, the seal is what shows the authentication of you, that you're the real deal. It's authenticated. The Lord knows them that are His. Otherwise, are you the real deal? And what's going to show it? And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ. What's going to show it is the foundations laid in you, for one. Secondly, that everyone who names the name of Christ, he departs from adikia, where it says iniquity. It's the word, un, means unrighteousness. That means not only do we have the foundation laid by hearing and doing the word, but also we get rid of all the sin, all the unrighteousness in our life. And a great house is not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of good wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. What determines whether we're a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor, which would mean really disgrace? We're a disgrace because we haven't done what he said. We haven't built the house. 
If a man therefore purge himself, because the building of the house, remember, involves the cleansing out. You, you can't build a house when all this rubbish and uncleanness stuff in you. He's to cleanse himself from these. That means to cleanse out thoroughly, totally. He shall be a vessel unto honor. So what's determining what kind of vessel you are is what you are doing with the Word of God, including the cleansing out of all of the purging out of all the unrighteousness. He'll be sanctified. That's going to be the result. Meet for the Master's use and prepared into every good work. And some people want to try to just go out there and be used and, and do the work of God. They haven't come to the place of being sanctified in a vessel of honor and cleansed themselves out. They're not in any position to be going out doing that until they've gone through some cleansing and get rid of this, this evil stuff to be a vessel of honor to be sanctified. And then you'll be meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. And that is important. We see another thing over in Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 3, and we saw this the other night when we were talking about the entering into spiritual rest by possessing the promises. Verse 3, this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch that he who hath builded the house has more honor than the house. Who's building the house in you? The Lord is. Every man, every, excuse me, every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. Remember, you're a laborer together with him. You have a part to play in this building. But God, because how is God doing it? By the word that you're doing. But if you don't do the word, you're not putting your, him in operation. So you are doing an aspect of it in building these things by hearing and doing the word. And God is the one who's accomplishing this work on the inside of you. We see the fact that verse 6, Christ is the son over his own house, which whose house are we, just because we're born again? No. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. It's what you do consistently. You're to hold fast this confidence and rejoice in the hope. Firm, steadfast, stable unto the end. And then he goes on and he says in verse 7, Today if you will hear, if you might hear his voice. It's a subjunctive mood verb, meaning a condition. Some people don't want to hear his voice. They don't hear his word. Well, if we might hear his voice, we need to get in that position to hear his word. Then we're, of course, responsible to do it, which is what we should be doing. Harden not your hearts. How did they harden the hearts? Because they didn't obey it. But they heard. They ignored it. They were disobedient. Harden not your hearts is in the provocation of the day of temptation in the wilderness. Your fathers tempted me, proved me, saw my works 40 years. I was grieved with that generation, said they do always err in their heart because they wouldn't do the word, and they've not known my ways. If we don't do the word, are we going to see the building of God in our life? No. And are we going to get real revelation of his ways? No, because our heart is not right. Our heart must always be ready to do what God wants. So, I swear in my wrath, as we saw, they shall not enter into his rest. Take heed, brethren, lest any of you be, have any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing, from the living God. You actually withdraw and stood off and removed yourself. You're standing away from God. Is he going to get the work done in your life if we have any evil heart of unbelief? No, it's not going to happen. And then he goes on in verse 13. Tells you something important. Exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Oh, many people think, well, if I confess my sin, I'll, uh, if I sin, I'll just confess my sin, everything will be fine. No. Every time you sin, the deceitfulness of sin is working, working and it's hardening your heart. That's why we've got to conquer all sin, and we cannot be giving place to it. And we are, that's why I exhort them, say, don't let anybody be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. Just because we're born again? No. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. And we're not going to be giving place to the areas of sin in our life. One other place we want to look at for a moment. And this is over in Hagehi. In building the spiritual house of God. In verse 2. Thus, this is 
It's prophetic for today. It's always been prophetic all along. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time has not come that the Lord's house shall be built. There's many people who don't want to build the things of God in their life. They don't want to build God's house. They want to do what they want to do. They're still on their own agenda. They're going to go nowhere. That is a problem. Well, he told them, You're dwelling in your sealed houses, and this house is lying waste. Consider your ways. You sow much and bring in little. You eat, you have not enough. You drink, you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, there's none warm. He earns wages, earns wages to put it in bag with holes. Where's the fruit? Where's the victory? Where's the promises? Where's all the good the blessings of God? They're not happening. And you can tell there's something wrong with them. Consider your ways. He goes up and says, you go up there and build the house and I'll take pleasure in it and be glorified if you build his house. That's what this is talking about. Oh, you looked for much. Oh, I want to see much for, much for me. Yet it came to little, and you brought it home, and I did blow upon it wise, saith the Lord of hosts. Because you're just doing what you want. You're not doing what God wants. Because of mine house, that's waste. And you run every man to his own house. You can't be building your own house. We cannot be doing things according to a, what selfish attitudes we want to do. It's got to be building the things of God. And, of course, what happened? They had all these curses over them. Their heaven was stayed with dew. The earth was stayed from her fruit. They had a drought upon the land. No corn, wine, oil, and everything. Nothing was bringing anything forth. They weren't seeing any blessings whatsoever. Then we come to the remnant. And these are the people that are obeying in these last days. They obey the voice of the Lord. They have the fear before the Lord. And they're going to do what God wants them to do. God is with these ones who are obeying him and have the fear of the Lord. This is the remnant. They're the ones that come and they're doing work in the house of the Lord. They're building the things of God in their life. We come to the seventh month. This is prophetic of the end time church, this being accomplished. And we speak again to the remnant, the residue of the people. And he says in verse 3, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory, the early church? It had the glory of God manifest. How do you see it now? Talking about the church at this point in time. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of as nothing? That's right. The glory departed. That's for sure. Yet now be strong. We're to be strong. And work, which means be a doer of the word. It's the word do. For I am with you. You've got to get strong. And you've got to be doing the th Word of God if you're going to see this building be accomplished. He talks about, according to the Word that I covenanted with you. You're going to walk according to covenant and do the Word of the covenant that He's brought you into. He says, yet once it's a little while and I'll shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. The shaking is going to come. I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come, which is the Lord coming to every nation. I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. What house is that? The end time church. Silver's mine, gold is mine, he'll be provide. Glory of the latter house will be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, which is completeness and soundness, the word shalom. The complete work being finished. That's what he's going to do. Because this work will be accomplished the glory of the latter house will be greater. It will be poured out on the end time church. That is what God wants. This work is to be done in the end time church and is to be done in your life. You want to see at the end of your days that this work has been accomplished. 2 Corinthians 5.1 says, For we know that if our earthly house of the tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. What kind of building of God should we have? one that's been by, by the word of God in us. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. What kind of a building of God do you have in your life? We want to be sure the building of God has been accomplished. And it hasn't been hindered. It hasn't been stifled. It hasn't been weakened. We want to see the building of God come forth. He will accomplish it. One last passage of scripture. It's over in Zechariah. In chapter 6, Jesus is the one who's doing this great work. Verse 12, 
He speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, that's speaking of Jesus, he shall grow up out of his place, he'll build the temple of the Lord. He's the cornerstone, and he's building the temple of God in every single one of us. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory. The glory of God will come into us. He shall sit and rule upon his throne. He'll be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace will be between both. This is this completeness and soundness, shalom. The wholeness will come forth in our life as we see this building be done. Crowns will be to Helam. Those are the ones that have strength. I mean strength. To Debijah, the ones where they've seen God, Jehovah's goodness. And the goodness comes because you're continuing in his word. To Jediah, which means Jehovah has known, meaning he knows you because, remember, he knows those that are his because the foundation's been established surely and they've departed from iniquity and they, they've made their vessel of honor, meet for the master's use because they cleanse themselves from all the evil. And to him, favor, the favored one, the son of Zephaniah, who Jehovah has treasured. God treasures the ones who have seen the work. Remember, we become his peculiar, valued possession, peculiar treasure, as we see the work of God done. For a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. That means in, pre, in, in succeeding generations. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me, and this shall come to pass. What? the building of the temple of the Lord, if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. What does it come down to? Obedience, putting the word first place, hearing and doing the word, total yieldedness to him, allowing him to have his way to carry everything out in your life. And we will look at one last scripture, which is important for you to realize you are responsible to do your part, and then God will do his part. Philippians 2, verse 12. Where, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, that's where God wants to bring you to. Always obeyed. Not as in my presence now, but much more in my absence. Work out, perform, accomplish, achieve, do, continually. Present tense. A command, imperative mood your own salvation. You get to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, the fear of the Lord, by always obeying. That put God, puts God in work, at work. This is, and it's, it is God which is actively operative and put into work and put in His power and operation in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure, and He will accomplish a great work in your life. The spiritual house of God is to be built in every single one of us. As it happens, we'll see the blessings of God, we'll see all the cleansing, we'll see all the e e evil eliminated out, we'll see everything accomplished that God purposes, we'll come to the place of being strong and mighty and walking in, in the way of the Lord with the glory of God poured out. The complete work, shalom, will be accomplished in us. And the glory of God will be poured out in this end time church that's gone on to perfection. That is what he's accomplishing in the body of Christ. And that's the remnant who will be always obedient and hear his word and do what he says and obey him, hearkening diligently to the voice of the Lord. That is what is necessary. And that's what God wants worked in your life to see the building of the house of God in you. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you that you are coming forth to the body of Christ to build the house of the Lord, in those who will obey, the remnant who will hearken unto your voice and do the word consistently to see the foundation laid strongly in their life. We will come out of all captivity and come to the place of walking in your ways. We will have seeking you with our heart and soul and being a doer of the word of righteousness, to come to the place of being holy before you with a perfect heart, keeping your commandments, being strong, removing all the rubbish, all the un ungodliness and unrighteousness, total cleansing of all of the evil. We are doing the work. 
We at the same time we're warring against the enemies. We have one hand on the weapon and we're getting rid of all the breaches. Every gap, every open door is being eliminated. I thank you that as I am built up, it's through knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I will not be slothful or lazy so my building does not decay. I will not be idle. I will make sure that I am doing the things you want. You will build the old waste places. You'll raise up the foundations. You'll repair the breaches. You'll restore the paths to dwell in. I will conquer every work of the enemy. Root it out. Pull it down. Destroy it. Throw it down. And I will build and plant the things of God. I will never allow my house to be built by unrighteousness. All the waste places are being cleansed out. I am continually being built up the spiritual house of God, hearing and doing the word as a true disciple, becoming strong and mighty so I can finish the building of the house and come to perfection and the dedication of the house. I understand. I am a laborer together with the Lord. He is doing the work as I am obeying the word of God. I will not build again the things that I've destroyed or I'd be a transgressor. I thank you that as I'm doing the word, I'm being built up to be a holy temple and a habitation of God. And I thank you that as this building is being accomplished, I am being founded, grounded, settled in love, in hope, and in faith, and I will be doing the works of God. And I thank you that as the house is built, the Lord will be glorified, and I will see the glory of God poured out upon me, the end time church. It's because I am diligent to obey the Lord and do all that he commands. And because I am always obedient, working out my salvation with fear and trembling, God is at work in me to will and do of his good pleasure, and he will build the house of God in me. And I will glorify him, and the glory of God will be poured out upon me. And the completed work will be finished to be a perfect church, a perfect house, gone on to perfection. Thank you, Lord, for accomplishing this great work, because I'm a hearer and a doer of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You put this in operation, God's going to do it. Remember, just when you get the foundation laid, that's just, that's just kind of square one. Then there's this work ongoing to finish this thing. There's all the rubbish and all the cleansing. It's got to go. And remember, you always got to keep your hand on the weapon because the enemy is trying to weaken you or get to you at any point in time. You've got to always be engaged in the warfare. And you be consistent. You have the fear of God before you. You do all the things it says. God will bring this work to pass in your life. Father, thank you for all you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of this word and see the building of the spiritual house of God in us that you will accomplish. Thank you for this great work. Thank you for it. not only the foundation laid, but the finishing of it to perfection to see us be a part of this glorious church in these last days. Thank you for doing it because we're hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.